sorry, buddy. All right, so we have a few announcements before we start. Um, first things first, on the back of all the doors that you came in through, you see the red boxes. Those are offering boxes. Oh. Make it sound. Can you hear me? All right. Offering boxes on the back of every door. We don't, you know, pass a plate around here. So if you feel led to offer or, you know, donate anything, it goes to paying for the lights, the microphone that works. Um, so, yeah, we appreciate it. No one gets paid here or anything. So thank you. Also, Zoom Deliverance is on Wednesdays at 6 p.m. So that's, so today's Thursday. So it would have been yesterday. That starts at 6 p.m. That has Rick and a few other ministers. So, you know, if you can't make it, those of you watching online, hop on that as well. Tuesday, Julie has, um, for women only, women only, I want to stress that. Women only, Tuesday, 6.30 p.m. She has classes here in the small sanctuary as well. She has a Zoom. And if you want to get a hold of the Zoom, for those of you online, email Mike at Mike at Hardcore Christianity. And he will get you Julie's email for you to contact her for the Zoom and password. And coming up on, oh yeah, also this right here, September 12th, 2023, coming up, we have um, the Miracle List. I believe this is Julie's thing, I think. Yes, this is what I was just talking about, Julie's thing. Um, they're doing baptisms as well. So if you want to be a part of that, ladies, you know, contact her. I don't think she's here tonight. Um, let's see, Children's Deliverance is coming up on August 5th. That's a Saturday, the first Saturday of August at 10 a.m. It's for children, preteens. Under 13 and under. Um, let's see. And those of you who don't know, every fourth Saturday of the month is Mike's training class for deliverance. So you come in here, you get to ask questions. Here, you know, you come up here and preach, you listen. But over there, you actually get to, you know, have deeper dialogue. And, you know, Mike even sometimes interacts with, uh, with you. Um, offering boxes, training. And I believe that's it. So thank you very much. And I guess I'll pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for today. Thank you for everyone that has showed up today. And those who could not make it, Lord, we ask that you bless them and make a way for them to come. That the enemy has been blocking and not only allowing them to show up, Father, whether it be because of work or family schedule or work schedule or, you know, the car or anything else, Father. We ask that you make a way, Father, to be able to, be able to come. And Lord, the people who were able to show up today, Lord, we thank you because it's by your grace that they are here. And we all are here. We thank you for this, Lord, and we ask you, we take the promises in your word. It says, whoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be delivered. We thank you that you put your word above your name and that we can take hold of this promise and stand on him, Father. We thank you for this, Lord. We ask you to deliver us and um, to be humble, Lord, and, and truthful in the deliverance. To not be afraid or embarrassed, but to realize that these spirits are not us and they need to come out of us in order to do your work, Father. We thank you for these things. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Testing, testing, testing. <laughs> Good to see you, bro. Hoping everybody's coming. He want to turn it down a little, Tony? I don't need to yell. Seems kind of quiet out there, but it's not quiet. It seems like things slow down because the sun's coming out and it's 116 degrees for three weeks straight, but the war is raging. And it's a fight. It's a fight between two kingdoms, the kingdom of God and the kingdom of darkness. It's a war, and it's an interdimensional war between the natural realm and the supernatural realm. And the natural man can't receive the promises of God because they're spiritually discerned. So spiritual opposition is foolishness to him because it can't be seen. And the devil has such an easy playground when you're not raised in the word of God, when you're not raised to understanding, seeking truth and seeking wisdom and seeking the power of the Holy Spirit, then what do you do? You self-seek and you feed yourself and you fend for yourself and you kick and scratch for yourself, and then yourself gets beat up and double-crossed and betrayed and used up, chewed up, spit out, and then you become hardened. 
You become hardened is the plan of the enemy so that you can't be spiritually sensitive. So he takes the war to you. Oh, and there's no better breeding ground than when you're raised in a dysfunctional family. Or if you're raised in a family without a father who cares. Oh, I knew tons of friends, and their fathers didn't care. We were the ones that smoked weed together as teenagers. The fathers who didn't care. And then there was fathers who weren't there. And we were the two groups of people smoking weed at 12 and 13. Oh, hindsight, you go back and spend some time looking back, and the enemy will be exposed. If you read the New Testament a couple times and look at your life, you go, wow, he did this to me. He blinded me. He made me hardened. He made me insensitive to spiritual things. So when God was opening a door, I couldn't even see it. Oh, everything that the Lord does, he's going to, he's going to, he's going to, it's going to look like work. It's going to look like work. And if you're a natural carnal person, you won't walk through that door because the work's for free. It's labor for someone else to help somebody else. But if somebody's walking by faith and he walks through that door with a servant's attitude, he'll find a ministry over there. He'll find a calling. He'll find that he was born with an anointing from God when he was born from above. Oh, but why do only a few find it? Because the broad road, they're on the broad road. The broad road, it's wide. It's easy to get on it. It's easy to get on the broad road. The, the broad road will make you happy for a while. Sex outside of wedlock, it'll make you happy for a while. Dudes will pat you on the back. Other girls will be interested in you because you got that girl and they're jealous and they want what someone else has had. You can get in that broad road. It'll be entertaining for you for a while. And then you're in your mid-50s like me and now all my friends are on their second, third divorce. Their kids are mentally ill. They're drug addicts. They're drunks. They don't spend any time at home. They can't stand home. Oh, there's problems. So, some made it through. Some of them, especially the ones that had Christ, even a little bit of Christ, boy, it, it helped a lot. It didn't always help to keep kids off drugs and keep them out of sexual morality, but it kept them around the family because at least they sense some love. At least when you go out and you try the world and the world says they love you and they say they're there for you, but they turn their back on you, betray you enough, then you come back home where you found genuine love. But if someone didn't have that structure, oh, they don't. They don't have anything to gauge it with. They don't have anything to gauge it with. And so they have to have faith when they hear the gospel. If you don't combine your faith or reach out with an actual action to the gospel, then the gospel passes you by. Oh, most people don't understand that. It passes you by. And it says if you, you, you hear the word of God, and they were hearing it from the apostles. They, they, they weren't hearing it from some guy third, fourth hand, kind of muttering around in the scriptures. They heard it from the representatives of Jesus himself. He appointed 12, sent out 12, sent out 70 as witnesses. And it says, hey, when they didn't combine it with faith, they kind of, I don't know about all this. If I want this, and the enemy goes, snatch, I'll take that. But most, what most people don't understand is the devil will snatch any part of the gospel which you don't grab by faith. And so when you read things, there's things that were hard to understand. There was things that Jesus would preach to the masses, and they'd go home with their heads down. Hey, unless you eat my blood and eat my body and drink my blood, you'll have no part in me. They're like, what is this? We're not these pagan cannibals like those psychos over in wherever they were from. Like they, they heard of people like that. They bounced. Why? Because they were only thinking carnal. And Jesus was challenging them. There's two parts to a man. There's a spiritual part and there's a natural part. There's the carnal part. And you need to be spiritually minded. You need to then be spiritually motivated. You have to have spiritual desires. And then what happens? The doors open and you walk in and you get spiritual revelation. You get comfort for your soul. You understand that with faith and trust in Jesus Christ and his finished work that you can be born again. You can get another chance. You can get another chance at life. You get another chance to redo this thing. There's no other opportunity like that in the world. There's, there's sometimes you get a second chance. And I've had old girlfriends that took me back, but that second chance was they would freak out on the phone because they heard the TV. Who's over there? What are you doing? You're doing the same. It was over. 
So some second chances really aren't second chances. They're second chances with a mountain so high you could never climb it, and so it's doomed for destruction. But Jesus had a way when his son shed his innocent blood, the innocent son of the sinless son of God was shed on the cross of Calvary. It says when someone applies that blood by faith, I believe in that blood. I believe he had to come and die for me, a sinner. He is the only way. Then that blood, when you confess your sin and repent, a lot of people confess it. Judas confessed his sin. He throws back the 40 shekels of silver. I betrayed innocent blood, and he goes to hell. Because what? He repented to man, and he didn't repent to God. So repenting to man isn't enough. you got to repent to the Lord, and to repent to the Lord is truly to change your mind. And so when you truly repent, it says, then the blood of Jesus cleanses you from unrighteousness. It washes your sin into a sea of of forgetfulness. So God has a supernatural ability that man doesn't have. His ways are far above our ways. That's clear in the Bible. But the way to forget your sins, to choose himself, to remember it no more. Why? So you can come boldly. So you can come with the expectation of a work that's been done for you, that he supplied the sacrifice. He supplied the perfect life. And so your faith and trust is in him. That righteousness is imputed upon you when you believe. So you can actually come in your weakness. You can come when you're struggling. You can come when you're desiring to be a new creature in Christ Jesus because it's the only way. It's through trial and error. I'm 50-some years old, and man, I try to get the physique back. And I, I don't really care about body fat. I like to lift heavy weights. But after, I think I went on like a fast one time, about 45, maybe 43, and the body said, nope, we're not going to lift those weights anymore. <laughs> uh, so before, I, I would take time off, I'd take a little creatine, a little extra protein powder, but one day the body says, we're just not going to do that. Well, why am I telling that story? Because there has to be something in your mind that says, a matter of fact, we're just not going to do certain things anymore. Amen. It, it, it has to happen. It has to be from your own willpower. Now, the devil's so smart, he plays religion. He masquerades even as an angel of light. And he'll say, you need to be a disciple. You know what? You need to get out there and preach. You need to get out there on that street corner. You got to preach. You got to tell everybody about Jesus. You gotta, and he'll, he'll get you running before you even learn how to walk. You, you got to learn how to walk. You got to learn how to walk upright. You got to learn how to walk with integrity. You got to learn how to walk with Jesus. And then you start building a little bit of momentum. And then what happens is you start understanding that he has to be the one to change me. I got to activate my free will because my free will is powerful. I can choose this day whom I'll serve. I can choose to go down this road and that road. God never violates free will. He doesn't work with slaves. He works with free will participants. And so when you choose to do things, oh, and then you learn how to lean on him. You learn how to draw in the strength of the Holy Spirit. You get wisdom and knowledge from his word. You begin to feast on his word. And it begins to give sustenance and, and strength into your natural man and your spirit grows. And what happens is now you can do some things because you repented, because you surrendered, because you stood your ground and said, I'm not going to do that anymore. You're able now to tap into the power of God to actually do some stuff that you could never do before. It's real. But if you never try, if you just got this fantasy, if you just got this, this crazy thing, maybe you heard from somebody that spoke it out of context, or maybe you heard it out of context, that God just comes down and makes you a certain person. No, he makes you shaping and molding when you get yourself into his hands. Now, it does say if any man is in Christ, that doesn't mean he just called upon Christ. He's not a brand new creature because it says the old things pass away and behold, all things pass become new. This is a process of your old man being whittling down by your own free will, and then it's growing by stepping out in faith, training yourself, getting around a strong cloud of great witnesses, gathering together as the saints, beginning to offer up a sacrifice of praise, beginning to come out of your natural willpower, your natural wants and desires for everything that you hoped and thought would make you happy, and then you begin to find peace in him. You begin to find trust in him. Then you begin to press through. Why? Because then there'll be some adversity. 
Most people quit because they have another fantasy in their head that the minute you want to do good, God's just licking his chops and rubbing his hands like, oh, we're going to make you this incredible preacher and woman of God. I'm about to give you everything you wanted. And no, he said, I will give you everything, but you're going to be tested. What you're built upon is going to be tested. The adversary, the devil has the right to test where you're built. Are you built because he loves you and gave you everything and financially gives you everything? Uh, well, then that's going to be tested because you built some stuff on lies and because you built some stuff on truth. It says the Lord gives and the Lord takes away. It says don't trust in material things. Everything you, you, take, you came in with nothing, you go out with nothing. Paul says, hey, I learned the key. Whether I'm well-fed, I'm hungry, I got plenty, I'm in lack to be content in any and every situation. Warren Buffett became the greatest stock investor of all time, and he didn't try to get every dime in the stock. He said, hey, I, just, I want this middle 60%. I want to see this thing moving. I want to see if my, my charts and my data and my projections are all correct. And when I see it move, at the point when it's climbed 20%, I'm jumping in there. And then I'm going to just try to get this 60%, and hey, it might go higher, but I don't want to get greedy. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to sell at this point, and it became the most powerful. Well, where did where'd that principle come from? Well, it, it came from biblical, being content. Oh, but what happened? Why does everybody in the stock market, I know so many guys who are up. I know so many dudes that told me they lost 200000 500000 It goes on and on. They, they had to restructure, go back to work, because what happened? Everyone tells you when they start trading, that dollars become digits. It almost becomes like a video game. They lose the cent. That's why Vegas wants you to play with chips. They want to take your cash and give you some chips. Because losing some chips, whether they're black or blue or red, and he's playing with $50, you're playing with 5000 it all looks the same. And, and what are they doing? They're suckering you. So you have to learn to be content but if you're content and you're not moving forward, that doesn't make any sense. You can't be ca content with doing nothing. You can't be content when you're lukewarm. The Bible says, I wish you were hot or you were cold. If you're cold, you're not born again. You're, dre you're dead in your sins and trespasses. You're an alien, a foreigner to God and his covenants and his promises. So he wants to save those people. He's looking to save all mankind. He desires none to perish, all to come to the knowledge of Jesus and be saved. And hey, once you get saved, you're supposed to fan the flame to keep the fire. That's work. That's effort. That's intentionality. That's a desire. In order to do that, you got to cut some people out of your life. You got to cut some thoughts out of your life. You got to forgive some people. You got to forgive yourself. You got to let some wounds and hurts and pains and failures go. And you got to fan the flame to push through adversity. There's adversity in this world. I, when I got married, I was living in Scottsdale. Yeah, I wasn't rich either. I got blessed. I bought a three-bedroom, two-bath house, two-car carport with a nice pool for 85000 bucks. Yeah, 85000 bucks. I sure wish I would have kept it. Yeah, I was in the 90s, a long time ago. But what that is, it's an area where everyone goes to work at the hotel. They work at the bars. They work at the nightclubs. They work at the mall. They work in retail. And the Lord did it on purpose because you're going to be right down. I'm going to test you. You're going to be right down in the mix of that. You're going to be you're going to be 15 blocks, one, two miles from right down. You're going to eat there. You're going to you're going to go to breakfast. You're going to go to the movie theater by there, and you're going to be in the mix of all of it. Why? So that you can be content. He puts you in positions to test you. And then, hey, if you're looking with your eyes, you're like, man, I need to build my money up. Man, I need to get a nicer wardrobe. Man, I need to be eating a little better. I need to be eating salads so I can be a little more attractive to the opposite. I mean, it's, it's just a carnal environment. And people come there. The average person only lives there a couple years. The majority of them come from the Midwest, and they find out that... Uh, it isn't everything it was cracked up to be, but it's a little hurrah for a couple years, and they move out, and there's always a new group coming in. 
And everybody wants to hire pretty people in all those type of places. Pretty people are looking for pretty people. And so people with materialism can get in and get pretty people, even if they're not that pretty because they got a lot of material possessions. And it's just a big, fleshly, carnal environment. But the, dead, the Lord did it by design. What are you going to do? Oh, you used to drive down to this place. So you, you used to pay 10 bucks to get into that nightclub. Uh, yeah, you used to like to go. That was your motivation. That was your hopes for the rest of the week to get ready for the weekend to go to that place. What are you going to do? Well, most people think it's strange when you're tested. Most people think it's strange when the test comes again and somebody else betrays you. Somebody else takes from you who said they loved you and kept pushing you till you caved in to premarital sex. Or you pushed in and they kept pushing in rather to get you back on drinking, back on smoking weed. Well, what was it? What were they there for? The devil had the right to come and put them in your life to see how you would stand, to see how you would react, to see what kind of changes you would make. Because if you don't make any changes, then you take yourself out of the master's hands and the shaping and molding stop because you activated your free will to do what you wanted to do. And you stay at the same level. But most of the time, He's smart, the devil rather, he's smart, he puts a snare, he puts a hold, and then he reels you back further. Oh, he starts, he takes you in a current. He takes you in a current, you think you're treading water. It doesn't seem when the current is slow like you're going too far. But what happens is you take your eyes off the shore, you take your eyes uh, off your hopes and dreams, you take your eyes off the Lord, and you find yourself way down shore. You find yourself in a position that's harder to get back. Some of you are in a position you got saved at 15. Now you're coming back here and you're 35. And the devil told you you can't come back because you burned 20 years. Well, you can. But you're going to have to fight. That's the only way it is. You're going to have to fight. You relapse to drugs. You relapse to sex. You relapse to depression. You relapse to playing video games as a man for five hours a day. You're going to have to fight. It has holds on you. It has a position in your life, and it got the position by you yielding according to your own free will. There's no other way. Now, grace is, there's incredible grace when you get saved. And most people don't understand grace. And they, then the devil uses the miracles and the grace that you got from the Lord as a tool against you. So here's, I was talking about last night on the Zoom. When I first got saved, I really didn't care about no one. I didn't want to hurt anybody, but there's 8 million people in the world. What would I got any business with you? I'm not interested in you. I don't want you in my life. You'd be a hassle. I trust people that I know. I trust what I can see. I don't trust strangers. And so I was hardened, especially being a ticket scalper. It, it was, we took on a mindset. It was us against the world. And the one that leaves with the most cash is victorious. The one that's rising up and financially excelling is the winner. And I believe that mindset. Well, I got saved the very next day that I get saved. The Lord is convicting me of sin. He dropped something in me so fast to treat someone else like I myself want to be treated. I'd never done that for years. I quit doing that probably in the seventh or eighth grade. I said, well, I don't have to. I'm bigger than you. I'm going to do what I want to do. How about them apples? It was selfishness. It was narcissism. It was greedy. But he says, boom. Nope, here's my way. And I started caring. And I was caring. And I said, what is this? What, am I, what I'm 25 years old and I'm going to start caring for people? I don't care for people anymore. That was the supernatural grace of God that just deposited something in you. Instantly, I get saved and my eyes were open. I said, oh, man, I got this girl on the side. She wants to marry me, and I've just been putting her on the side. I, what am I doing? This is from God. She, this, is, this is to be my wife. 30 years later, I'm still married. I, 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 I could see this isn't like everyone else. And instantly, something was dropped in me. Don't mess around sexually. Don't get involved with anyone else. This is, this is forbidden. This is an offense to me. Instantly, my eyes were open. I'm supposed to have a family. I'm supposed to have children. I got to have trust. I got to have loyalty. I got to have respect. She has to have respect for me. This it was just dropped in there. But, you know, not everything was dropped in there. Well, I, I kept smoking pot. I had been smoking pot for 10 years. I thought, well, pot's not bad. Get around me smoking pot. I'm funny. Get around me drinking. It's not going to be funny if I drink too much. 
You know, I, my jokes probably aren't funny. I'll think they're funny when I'm drinking. But I, I justified it. I'll say you shouldn't smoke out three, four times a day and look like Spicoli and start changing your tone of voice and, and the way you speak. But, hey, if you smoke a little at the end of the day, it's all good. I, I, I had hook, line, and sinkered. That was downloaded into my mind. Some things go deeper into your soul, like drugs. Drugs will go deep down into your soul. Lust and sexual sin can go deep down in your soul. So what will happen is God will do some miracles instantaneously when you get born again. But some, he wants you to choose. And so I was convicted, but I don't have any counselors. I'm convicted and smoking the weed. I'm like, man, this, this don't seem to make me as relaxed as it used to. Well, why am I having anxiety? I've never had, I did this to get rid of anxiety. Why do I have anxiety now? I said, Lord, if you don't want me to smoke it, just tell me. And I would wait for like an audible voice. He told me a couple things audibly. Don't do that. I heard a few things, but he wouldn't tell me on this one. Why? He was testing my faith. What are you going to do? Are you going to choose to do the right thing? I, I would do all kinds of crazy things. I'd go out. That's when they were building uh, the 202, cutting through Mesa and Tempe, and it was, it was just being uh, bulldozed through, and I'd ride my mountain bike out there, and i said, Lord, just show me a shooting star. I mean, I see him fall all the time. Drop one today. I'll know that's from you. Not to smoke pot. I'll quit smoking pot. I would do weird things. I'd go mountain biking up to the mountains, and i said, well, I got the pot, Lord. You know, I won't smoke this if you tell me. Well, I didn't hear anything. Uh, maybe, uh, maybe it's okay. I'm not hearing anything. Well, I'm, I'm a brand new Christian. I'm six months saved. I'm eight months saved. Well, if you don't get any counsel, if you don't read the Bible, where's your wisdom and, and counsel going to come from? From yourself? So the Lord's like, hey, I'm going to teach you. You're by yourself. I'm going to teach you. I'm going to teach you to do what's right when you choose to do what's right. And hey, he took away the joy for a while. And then he started showing me. I was, it was World Cup, 1994. That thing was incredible it was in America. You, you could make a few thousand a day. And I remember I was in Dallas. I worked a few days, and weed was calling me home. And they're like, man, we're going to Washington, D.C. We think it's going to be big. It's been sold out. It was one of the first events sold out. I'm like, no, nah, I'm going home because I wanted to smoke some pot. I smoked the pot. I'm not even... I'm not feeling like I used to feel. I'm not feeling that good. And then my buddies say, it was so huge. Everyone made like $3,500. Every scalper out there just went. It was one of those things we used to call it going off the wall. And I'm like, whoa, what is, this stuff's costing me. It's, it's costing me money. It's costing me motivation. It, it called my name to come back here. Why, why, why would I need to come back? Well, I didn't like smoking with people. I, I didn't feel comfortable smoking with heathens and psychos, and that most scalpers were psychos. But I wanted to smoke, so I was going home. Well, hey, you got to recognize the voice of another. So sometimes why the devil didn't take, or the Lord didn't take away what the devil put on you right away, because he wanted you to recognize the voice of another. If he just did everything for you, uh, that, that's, not, that's not how this world works. In this world, there's two. There's two tables. There's two cups. There's two roads. There's two voices. There's two spirits, the spirit of, of the Lord. There's the Antichrist spirit. There, there's two ways, and you choose. So if you can't discern the voice of another, how are you going to constantly choose and navigate yourself through this insane world? There has to be a little bit of spiritual discernment. There has to be some sort of knowledge being developed inside you so that you can navigate correctly and efficiently so you don't continually get destroyed by the devil because he's first after your faith. Because once your faith is gone, it's impossible to please God. So now you're just a pew-sitting Christian. Now you're just throwing up some hands. You're trying to look for a breakthrough. But hey, you keep going. You get enough church. You get enough friends that are godly and born again. Something can drop on you, and, and faith can arise. A good sermon, a good testimony, a good challenge you. Someone to challenge you according to the word of God. Boom, something can happen. But the reality is you can speed this thing up by a simple discerning. Understanding his voice, understanding the value of the Holy Spirit. He has to be of the utmost value. People guard their money. I mean, people got, what, what's that one? They, you got life lock. Now you got, you got mortgage lock. You got Rudy Giuliani advertising the, to, to secure your, your title deed on your mortgage. That was scary. 
when he was representing the company, but whatever, you know, they're looking for some celebrity, celebrity faces to sell you more products. You got health insurance. Oh, that's mandated. Thank you, Barack Hussein Obama. Uh, you got auto insurance. You got homeowners insurance. Why? Because, hey, this is a sin-stained world and bad things happen and bad things can cost you a lot. Well, you got to have some spiritual insurance. The spiritual insurance is the Holy Spirit power, your obedience to that power, your respect to that power, and then the discerning, the voice of another who's challenging that voice, who's trying to emasculate that power, stealing your faith. Oh, if you can get that, your, your deliverance will go well. But if you're just carnally minded and you're just motivated, well, well, I don't like this church. They're all hardcore crying and praying all the time. Well, you got to pray all the time. Because uh, the Bible says, my house shall be called a house of prayer, not of hipster Christian music and tight pants, effeminate men singers and twirly bird little girls with their fluffy hair looking for attention while they're singing to you. Oh, you don't like that, huh? You think that's the way it should go down. Rock what you got. Show them what you have. Glorify God and all you are. It's all carnal. It's all, it's, all a, it's all a farce. It's all just like regular music. Regular music. Lionel Richie will make you cry. The temptations will put a little pep in your step and want you to go down to the discotheque. It all has motivations and, and something inside you. But true worshipers... Worship in spirit, oh, through the Holy Spirit, and they worship in truth. Oh, you're not getting it. You can't worship in the spirit and have a bunch of lies. That stuff's dangerous. Hello, Bethel music. I ain't listen to that stuff because I listen to their, I listen to that dude. And I don't want nothing to do with their kundalini. If demons can come through rock and roll, why can't they come through kundalini Christian music? I'm not playing with it. I try not to listen to music unless it's being played on YouTube in black and white. I want something old before people were corrupted and, and decayed with carnality and selfish ambitions and vain and crazy ideas. We're crazy spirits. Crazy spirits. The guy came in. Bill Johnson's one of his main guys came in here. And his wife slithered like a snake. And she got up and said, that's the Holy Spirit when he comes upon me. He makes you slither like a snake? And he told me, Melissa met him or her, and I met him. She goes, I'm running this. Pastor's college school is supernatural. I'm the main guy. I'm, I'm doing the building thing. And this woman just chews me up and tears me down all night long. Everything I do, she's just on me so magnified. Everybody in the ministry respects me. People at the church, my woman is just tearing me down. Ooh, that's a foul demon. A man has to grow with encouragement. Now, he can grow in the military, but, you know, that lasts for a while. Most guys, they, they, they might put in four years of that, and then they can't take it. They're going back and buying a motorcycle and smoking some weed. You know, they're, they're going to go take their PTSD meds. You know, th you're not built for being yelled at. You're not built. A man was to be charged. Oh, King David, when he led his people into battle, oh, he, he, he led a charge of, of worship. He sent out the worshipers first. U U Uriah the Hittite, this guy was so off the wall, hardcore. King David calls him in. He, he's going to try to try to get him to think he impregnated his wife because he already did. And he says, hey, what, what's the deal? Why are you calling me off the battlefield? He goes, hey, I want you to sleep with your wife. He said, no way. I, I'm not going into my own quarters with my own wife and enjoy the presence of my wife. When my men are on the battlefield, I'll sleep at the end of the city's gates. Oh, what was that? That was called a warfare mentality. And that's not a me, me, me mentality. That's the, such the opposite of a me, me, me mentality. That, that's a true warrior mentality. There has to be a true warrior mentality that you can tap into. You don't have to have a true warrior mentality 24 hours a day. You should have some love and some enjoyment and some skills that you go into operation and you bear fruit with your labor. 
the fruits of your hands. You're a giver. You're a lover. You're a sharer with things. You're an encourager. But you have to have a warfare mentality. And Uriah the Hittite knew that, hey, while my men are in battle, I I can't be up there having my wife feed me grapes and enjoying a sexual relationship and get back onto that battlefield. Not when the battle's raging, not when people are losing their lives. I got to keep the warfare mentality. Therefore, I'm going to sleep out here at the edge of the city gate. So once you get going in deliverance, You have to gain the upper hand over the devil. You have to gain some spiritual attributes from the Holy Spirit that you didn't have before. If you just go back to yourself, well, the devil will go, hey, I got her or him once before. I'll go ahead and implement the same system again, and we'll gobble them back up. This time I'll put some more reinforcements on them so when they yield to us, We'll put them in more bondage. So you got to keep this warfare mentality so that you learn how to operate in it. Well, once you can discern the voice of another, now you can go into the warfare mentality. I'm not going to take it. I I helped a guy one time. He said, I got born again in my 20s. I've slept with over 100 men. I was a bartender in Vegas, and I I would weep, and I would tell the Lord. I'd wake up in another strange man's hotel or my room or something, and I would cry, and I would go, and I said, Lord, I'm so sorry. I don't want to do this anymore. I I don't want AIDS. Don't let me have AIDS. Don't let me have these diseases. And God would bail him out. He said, one day I woke up. It was before he made this appointment and came here. He said, I heard God's voice. He said, this is your last chance. Some people, if you can't hear the voice of God, not everybody gets it's the last chance. you got to seize the opportunity while it's right in front of you. He's not asking you to do something unreasonable. These are biblical things, to have a biblical mindset, to have a warfare mentality, to begin to desire spiritual things so that you could be in spiritual operation and spiritual discernment and go into spiritual warfare so that you can go through doors of opportunity because the doors of opportunity are disguised as labor. And a carnal man won't go through a door of labor. Oh, I need to get something. I'm trying to look for Creeflow dollar. He's got that, send him 100 and get back, 10, get back 1,000. I like Creeflow. Tree flows in trouble. Those things are dwindling down. Oh, he'll, he'll start teaching spiritual warfare soon because he's going to need to make some money. But you can't, you can't teach what you don't do. It won't work. There'll be, there'll be holes in the system. There'll be breaches in the dam. And it won't be successful. It will only be partially successful. So you cannot be looking to these people who don't, who don't live what they say they do. You, you're going looking for a jet when, when a third of the world is dying from starvation. You need to fly around in a jet. I've listened to your preaching. It ain't all, it ain't all that. They don't need you. Stay over there in Atlanta and get you a Lexus and go get you a regular house. And get rid of the mansion and go give all that stuff away. Jesus said it was a requirement for some people. He told the rich young ruler, hey, he was doing everything right. He laid laid out six commandments. What must I do to inherit eternal life? He nails six of them. The guy goes, I'm in. This is good. I've done all six of these since my youth. He said, you lack one thing. You love money. I want you to sell all you have. I want you to give it all to the poor. Then I want you to come and follow me and you'll have true riches in heaven. And he went away sorrowful because he had great riches. He loved the great riches. He loved everything that it gave him. Riches, riches will give him. I just <laughs> look at him at a buddy's house, seeing if looking for a job. I'm like, okay, time to go back to work. Looking at his house, he goes, yeah, man, I, he just got back from a vacation in Hawaii for two weeks. Now he goes, yeah, I'm going down to South Africa for, for three weeks to get out of this heat. It's, it's winter over there. It's 75 every day. Hey, when you got crazy money, you just keep doing things. Things are entertaining, different environments, different oceans, different cultures, different hotels and resorts. They're entertaining, different business ideas. This world will stimulate you to the day you die. If you're looking to go down that road, it'll supply it for you, but it's going to take a forfeit. It's going to take a forfeit of your calling. It's going to take a forfeit of your anointing. It's going to give a, a forfeit of your soul if you continue in it long enough. 
Because there's two roads, and that's not the road God's calling you to, and that's why so many of you are struggling and you don't know why. That's why so many of you are feeling like you're rejected and you're feeling abandoned and alone when you're trying to serve God. You're not understanding. You need to get some spiritual equipment. You need to get some deliverance. You should be able to discern that there's a voice in your head, a nitpicker, a naysayer, a devil that's actually making you feel negative things, negative emotions. There, there's, there's little cravings that got to be demonic that can't be natural. You've been off that stuff for years. It, it, it's proven that once you're off a certain drug for a week, two weeks, you are not chemically addicted, physically addicted any longer. Yet the voice is still there. The cravings are still there. The memories are fresh from the way it used to make you feel. Why? Because the devil's bringing them back. And you don't have to live with them. The Lord has delivered us in Colossians chapter 1, 13 and 14. The Lord has delivered us from the power of darkness. So when you got saved, you were under the power of darkness. People wondering why Joe Biden keeps fumbling and bumbling and stumbling. Well, dude, he's under the power of darkness. That guy never got saved. Hunter Biden, why is he still smoking crack in the White House? You should know you shouldn't bring in a bag of crack in the White House. Crack kills. You know, they came out with that in the 90s. Because he's under the power of darkness. What you do does not make sense. The way you operate doesn't make sense. Sin has a toll. And he will decay you. He will throw arthritis in you. He'll put a tumor in you. This devil is vicious. He's not something to be played with. It's not something, I don't think you should go down that road. That's not healthy. No, that, that's detrimental to your soul and your physical well-being. He's playing for real. So he delivered us from the kingdom of darkness, and then he conveys you over to the kingdom of his son, of his love. In him we have redemption through what? Through his blood. That's what redeems you. That's what, when you put your faith and trust in Jesus and his shed blood on the cross, then you're redeemed, boom, to God. You're, you're instantly out of the power of Satan. You're in his hand. But now what happens? You got free will. He'll hold you there for a while. Some he'll hold for a week. Some he'll hold for a month. Some he'll hold might for a year. Might hold you. You might be able to breathe a little bit with a little bit of encouragement for three or four years. But at one time, it's, it's the requirement. The Bible says you have to renew your mind. What does that mean? That means you have to understand what God wants. You got to understand what God hates. You got to understand what your enemy does, how he operates, how he gets in, how he ensnares and tangles, how he puts people into bondage. You have to understand deliverance, how you get out of the bondage. You got to understand some things he takes away and makes new the minute you're conveyed, some things he wants you to use your own free will. And through you using your own free will, doing the right thing because of the check in your spirit, the 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 God instinct that he put in you the minute you were born again and you operate on it, ooh, it starts growing. It starts growing. It starts becoming more sensitive. Praise God. For the word of God in Hebrews is alive and it's active. It's, it's just not an instruction book. Jesus said, I and my word are one and the same. Jesus is alive. He's risen from the dead. He, the word is alive. And it's active. That means it goes into operation. One, if someone's standing on faith, it goes into operation to perform what they're standing on, what they're believing. It goes into operation when you're entering into spiritual warfare. It goes into operation to shape and mold you, to change you. It's sharper than a two-edged sword, and it penetrates, dividing even the soul and the spirit. The soul is the mind, the will, and the motions. And then you got your spirit man. When you got born again, the only thing born again in you is your spirit man. That's why when you run across a depressed, carnal Christian, he can believe even that he's not saved. Why? Because his mind's telling him that. His emotions, because of the betrayals, because the self-hatred and the self-disgust, because of the way he's been living, is in his emotions. And his will now has been altered. He used to will to want to serve God, to discipline himself, and he's lost the will. So the voice now of another tells him, you're not even saved. Oh, it says you get saved once. You, if you, you don't get saved twice, the Bible says. It says, hey, if you're a complete apostate, there's some people that are complete apostates. You can't do nothing with them. I think I met at least one of them in here out of the, out of the thousand that I've sat down with. I think I met one, and it was scary. 
And his wife finally threw him out and said, I'm done unless you get deliverance. And he didn't want no deliverance. He wanted to work me over and wanted me to give a good report so he could get back in that house. I said, I can't co-sign that. I don't know what you're even asking. That doesn't make sense. Well, the point is, you're born again. A smoldering wick by no means would the Lord snuff out. He's working with you. If you were an apostate, you would not be here. And so what's happening is you got saved once, but your mind is telling you it's not worth it. Your mind is telling you because of lies of the enemy, he doesn't want to help you. He's telling you things in the Bible aren't even real. They went away with the last apostle. All these traditions and doctrines of man that try to make the word of God of no effect. And if you believe them, they will be of no effect for you. And then your willpower, oh, it's diminished. So what do you have to do? The word has to divide. So there has to be a separation of your simple mind, will, and emotions and your spirit man. God saved your spirit. He didn't save your mind, will, and emotions. Your mind was left up to you to renew your mind according to the word of God, to get the word in, to reject the truth, to stand on it, to shun things that were forbidden. That was your job. God would not do that for you. You have to do it for yourself. So it, it, it divides even to the soul, spirit, between the soul and the spirit, the joints and the marrow. And then what does it do? It judges your thoughts. Are these thoughts right? Are you thinking right? Are you motivated correctly? Do you think about other people correctly? And then your attitude. Your attitude is your will. It judges your willpower. To understand, are you, are you aiming in the wrong direction? Are you backsliding? A backslider, by definition, he's laying on his back. He's going the opposite way. you got to rise up. And then it says, it judges your attitudes of what's in here, your heart. Ooh. He'll take away the heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. That's a process. You want to keep the stones? You want to keep the bitterness? You can live with it all the way till you get cancer. You can live with it all the way till I've seen people with arthritis, bones all gnarled up. You can keep it. It's going to cost you. The, 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 there's a payment for sin. The wages of sin is death. Some things will start dying. Some things will start, stop working on you. Some organs will shut down. Some cognitive function will dissipate. Some sensible reasoning will fade out of your mind, and you'll follow Fauci down to the football stadium and stick your arm out the window. Hello, you got suckered, you got lied to, you got manipulated, and you got dosed with some nasty. That wasn't just a bad idea. You got something nasty in there. I'd be coming down confessing it is sin. I'd be fighting until that nasty came out of you. That stuff's dropping people like flies. Psalm chapter 103, bless the Lord, O my soul. My mind, will, and emotion. He's speaking to his mind, will, and emotions. This is David, a man after, God, man after God's own heart. He's speaking to his own mind. He's saying, bless the Lord. He starts speaking to himself. He says, all that is within me, bless his holy name. He's, he's charging himself. He's retraining himself. He's saying, I got to get out of this carnal mindset. I got to get out of depression. I got to get out of defeat. I'm talking to my mind. I'm talking to my will. I'm talking to my emotion. It's time to get up out of this position. It's time to get out of this expectation of the enemy. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget all, not all of his benefits. You got to start thinking about the benefits of God. Bless, God blesses those who walk through those doors of opportunity. If you sit there or you shrink back, the Bible says God takes no pleasure in you. The first people in the book of Revelations that are thrown into hell are the cowardice and the fearful. I would have thought it would be those people from that child molestation video, those, those, those sex traffickers. If I was the Lord, I'd put a sex trafficker front. Nope. He says, I'm talking to the believers. You can't be a coward. And you can't be fearful unless you knew the truth and you had the power and you had the opportunity. He, it's, a, it's a serious calling when you get born again, when you come to the knowledge of Jesus. He lo lays out uh, the red carpet and opens the door for you to come in to be a family member for all eternity. And he says, I'll supply every need that you have according to my glorious riches, which are in heaven. They'll all come down, everything you need. I didn't say I'd give you everything you want. I don't give you things that you need, you think you need, that you'll spend on your own selfish desires. But if you ask for anything that's for my glory, I'll give it to you. But when you ask, you must believe. 
you don't just throw ask. Those are called idle words. The Bible says every idle word you'll give an account for on the day of judgment. You have to pray prayers that you believe. Amen. Well, hey, you got you to gotta have some faith. You got to have some faith before you can do some certain things. It won't be able to be done. Maybe a miracle could come down, try them. But, hey, you mostly don't get somebody healed from their infirmities until you at least have some faith to get up and find doors and knock. People who are knocking have found opposition between where they are and where they want to go. And it says, and if you knock, then I open a door. So if doors aren't open for somebody and you're just sitting there saved, wondering where all your blessings are, wondering why everyone isn't changed around you because they're causing you difficulty and hardships and disappointments, and you're sitting there grumbling and complaining, no, you're not going to get anything. You're not going to see any growth. You're not going to see any miracles. You have to activate your faith. Faith is an action according to what? What he said. So you're a coward if you don't believe it and you read it. Well, I don't feel it. I didn't get a chance to go to pastor's college. So I don't really know the word. You, don't, you need childlike faith to know the word. You don't need a pastor's degree. Last thing you need is a seminary degree from John MacArthur. That's the last thing you need. You need childlike faith and where you hear some and then you do it. And then you, you, you didn't see it happen. You go back to the drawing board and you, and you begin to build yourself up. You start praying like David, bless my soul. Bless the Lord rather, oh my soul. So you start speaking to yourself and you don't forget his benefits. Who forgives us what? Of all your iniquities. Whoa, whoa, whoa. all of them? That means not just the ones you had before you got saved, as you're stumbling along the road, as you have moments of doubt, as you run into some fear, as you get spiritually confused. So why would this happen? Because that's what you overcome before it knocked you down, before it made you quit, but then you become an overcomer. Those who overcome shall inherit eternal life. Not those who get saved and tried it for a while, then quit. No, it's those who keep on trusting God. And then he heals you from all your diseases. You don't got to be sick. It says right there, he heals you from all of your diseases. You can be well. He redeems you from your life of destruction. It seemed like you had a good life. Everybody liked you. Everyone patted you on the back. Man, you had an Instagram. You had two million followers. Boy, they were liking and sharing you every day. You were something sweet. Well, you were in destruction. You just didn't catch it. You just didn't have any spiritual discernment that that was all a, a farce. That was all a fantasy. That was all a temporary delusion. So he redeems us wherever we are. Maybe you were depressed and had no friends. He redeems you. He gives you that other chance and raises you up on another level to operate on that level. He crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies. He satisfies your mouth with good things so that your mouth is renewed like an eagle's. So that your youth, rather, my fault, you can be renewed. I've seen people renewed. I've seen some people in here with the most hellish lives. This one girl, she was raised in the Ukraine. Before the U, I knew anything about the Ukraine. I thought that was just Russia. She was such a severe alcoholic since 12. And her, her dad has, used to have to chain her to the hot water heater or whatever those, those uh, heaters, the boilers. She would break the chains. She'd run around these, these cities where there's tons of, this is in the 80s, where there was just tons of, of people that didn't have any jobs that lived in abandoned buildings, and they would rape her. So one time she decides, I'm going to kill myself. And she said, there's this freeway, and there's a tunnel, and all the cars are coming out of the tunnel. And they're, they're going fast, 60, 80 miles an hour. So she said, I'm drunk, and I'm about to go down that highway, and I'm going to get in that tunnel so that somewhere, some way, they're not going to see me and run me over. I'm going to kill myself. She drank a whole bottle of alcohol. She's stumbling. And about 50 yards before she gets to the tunnel, it starts raining so hard. And it rained so hard that she got sober. And then she heard God's voice, I don't want you to die. I want you to live. She didn't get saved right then, but she heard the voice of the Lord that gave her hope and gave her an expectation of something 
going to happen. Some door going to happen open for her. So something that she's always desired would actually be real in her life because she'd only had suffering and misery and poverty and pain and no love. A few years later, she got born again. Oh, and then she came in. I think she must have been in her late 30s and got delivered. God delivered from all those demons. So sometimes you come from a hellish life. Sometimes those are the best warriors. They know how to persevere. They know how great it is to be where they are. They don't take being saved as something common. They don't, they don't take the goodness of God and having a home and love and, and children. They don't take those things for granted. No, not when you've been through hell. Not when you've been somewhere. That's why when you overcome, you have an appreciation to be where you are. If you don't have any appreciation when God raises you up, you will soon fall back down or even fall further. You have to have some gratefulness. You have to have some appreciation for what God's doing, especially deliverance. Deliverance is a miracle. Healings are miracles. Salvation is miracles. Proverbs chapter 4, 14 and 15. Enter by the, do not enter by the path of the wicked and do not walk in the way of evil. Avoid it. Do not travel on it. Turn away from it and pass on. He's telling you right there, this thing is real. There is a road. And that thing, the lights get turned down. You want to see the lights turned down on somebody who probably used to have it? There's a hamburger works right down the street. They got incredible hamburgers. As the recession came, everybody reduced their hamburgers down to nothings. I mean, it's like, why even bother? But that place still has great hamburgers. But if you have to park in the back in the overflow, you have to walk through the bar area. And you want to go through a depressing time. This used to be an affluent area. This was the richest area in, in the 50s, 60s, and 70s, right in between here and downtown in Canto Park. And these people were playing golf. That's the Phoenix Country Club, I think is what that is. I'm not sure what that course is. But they had come in there, and now they're still there dying. Oh drinking and dying. Some of those chairs have plaques of the people who come there all the time. That's their seats. They, they've, they've put a little plaque on there. And now they're all getting old. They're 60, they're 70. And they're all, I don't know, life is sucked out of them. The only thing can help them is football and drinking. That's, I'm not mocking them. I'm telling you, that's sad. That's the devil. When he comes in, oh, you best, best believe when you were living in this neighborhood, you were living high on the hog. You, you were driving for 99 cents a gallon down to San Diego on the weekends in the summer. You were staying in a luxury hotel for $69.99 close to the ocean. Everything was cheap. Beer was a dollar. You, you were living the life, and he got his hooks in. Oh, he got that plug inside you, and he... He was sucking their souls right out of them. Can they still be saved? Absolutely, you can be saved. I tend to myself not to waste time with people that are on drugs or drinking. I've just been at it long enough to know that I'm going to catch you when you're locked up down in Maricopa County Corrections. I'll catch you when your mother drags you in here, or your wife drags you in here in a, in a desperation. But I, I kind of lost my ump for, unless the Lord told me, to a mumbler and a stumbler and uh, uh, eight million excuses all fueled up with demons. So there's hope for them, but you got to catch them. You can't catch them there. Don't, don't, don't go down to Hamburg Works and start getting them. you, you got to wait and catch them before they start drinking. You catch them in that parking lot because they've been sucked out of them. Some people are so hostile to the gospel. There was these two kids I couldn't take anymore. We're in the sauna this week. And, man, they got this stuff. Oh, that's real this and real, real that. And I'm like, dude, what, what is this? this? This is new Ebonics. Ebonics is old school. That's 90s uh, urban talk. These, this, this language I had never heard. It was on another level. And they were like 19 and 20 years old. So I said, hey, man, dude, you, you, you know time is short. You know Jesus is coming soon. I, I mean, I'm looking at him dead serious. I'm not, I'm not hyper. I'm like, you know he's coming soon, and you got to get yourself ready. You, you are not ready. What, man? Oh, what? And I started, I started going. And, and, he go, and uh, then I didn't catch the other guy. He goes, oh, yeah, man, he don't like weed either. And I guess I would preached to that dude over there another day. Little, little before when the weed talk gets out of hand, I got I to gotta correct that. Well, anyway, we get going. 
And uh, one dude was convicted. He was convicted. He started listening. The other guy, he was hostile. He didn't want nothing to do with it. He thought about mocking. He thought about, but his buddy was listening. Anyway, the point is, sometimes you 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 got to have a voice. You you got to throw a lifeline to someone who's straight sinking. You, you got to give them some kind of hope. I mean, Pete, me and Pete, we got the best one for for people that are whacked out on the street. I taught Pete how to do it. I, Pete's the foot foot soldier, so he's doing all the hard work. I said, Pete, this is what you got to say. And I use it sometimes, but he's beating those streets every day. And, and I said, Pete, I go right up to him. I said, hey, you know you're going to die soon. You know death is on. I, I, I tell people this. Well, you know Jesus loves you. You don't know about the glory. They've heard it all. They need to know the real. You're about to. You do fentanyl. You're living, you're living like a lizard. You're slithering around to QT, buying Slurpees to get enough sugar so you can go and find another couple dollars to buy. You got to warn these people the wrath of God is coming. You got to warn the lukewarm the wrath of God is coming. You got to war. You got to warn these people. There's people. I talked to this guy. He knows the Bible. Incredible. He can quote Bible verses like no one I know. He's read the Bible one time. He read it. Straight through in 24 hours or 26 hours, just got filled with the Spirit. He thinks, he thinks this QAnon stuff is real. He thinks Donald Trump's about to clean out the Illuminati. And he's about to establish righteousness in this country. And, and all these things are happening behind the scenes and you just don't. I said, dude, the bulldozer is already moving. The bulldozer is already plowing spiritually, and it has plowed all kinds of morality and all kinds of hopes and all kinds of dreams and all kinds of integrity, and it's already bulldozed it into the ocean. There's not much left for America. There's not much, no matter who shows up. When Jesus rules for a thousand years, they're still going to hate him. And they're still good after he was ruling and reigning on earth. Men, is, men are wicked. The only hope cannot come from a government. It can't come from a politician. It can't come from a narcissist politician. It has to come through the Holy Spirit. And you cannot have any part or portion in the Holy Spirit unless you're born again. And the minute you're born again, the words you speak are spirit and life. That's why when I have a sense of righteous indignation, I have a sense of warning somebody, it doesn't just fall on deaf ears. Now, I've, I've had some people squirm out of there because they got, you know, bad lifestyles and they've already wrestled God out of their hearts and they don't listen and they take off. But we got to open up our mouth. You better open up your mouth. But before you open up your mouth, the Bible says you overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of your testimony. You're not ready to even testify until you've had something dropped in you. What happens with the, with the Samaritan woman? She goes into town, and she's got some discernment. She doesn't say, hey, I had five husbands, and this guy told me I, I, the one I have isn't even my husband. She's got some biblical discernment. And she says, hey, come see a man who told me everything I ever did. She's already, got some, she's already got some discernment. She's already got some fire in her. When you get saved, there has to be some fire. There has to be dis some discernment. And the discernment has to compel you to do something out of your spirit, man. For what? She was compelled to go gather somebody so they could get some help. She knew that town was confused. She knew that all those Samaritans were rejected and called dogs by the Jews. They weren't allowed into the temple of God. They had to worship on the mountain. They knew what it was like to be grown up in a, or growing up in, a, in an outcast society. And now there was hope. And she wanted to go get some people so they could get some hope themselves. So you have to have some overcoming power. You, you got to get up and you got to get some, you got to get some deliverance tonight. You have to get rid of offenses. You, you, you got to get a, rid of being codependent to other people. You got a man that keeps telling you what to do, sinning, getting you to sin sexually. You have to have some integrity to shut him out and shut the door and lock it on that gook. You, you, you got to get away from some people that are evil. They're, then what happens? 
all of a sudden some power comes in because you actually went through a door. You actually are getting something from God. You actually begin to grow. God begins to begin to use you in a supernatural way. 2 Corinthians eleven fourteen. 14, Satan disguises himself as an angel of light. He'll whisper to you tonight and tell you you don't need deliverance. He'll, he'll whisper to you and he said, oh, if, if God wants you to be delivered, he'll just do it. You won't have to fight. You won't have to come to the altar. You'll just say, Lord, if it be your will, that's a, that's a fantasy. You probably could have done that the day you got born again. But now you've been saved for years and you've been serving the devil. You've been listening to his voice. You allowed him to entangle you. You got comfortable in sin. The only way out is for you to fight. And he's going he's gonna to talk like he's God tonight. He's going to try to talk you out of fighting. But I'm telling you, it's his voice. You need to recognize it before he goes into operation. Matt, oh, I already read that one. Wrapping her up. Oh, it's time. Second Samuel. Oh, here's how you fight. I have pursued my en enemies and I destroyed them. Neither did I turn back till they were all destroyed. Right. That means when you, you get into a fight, you got you to gotta fight to the end till they're all gone. I've destroyed them, wounded them, so that they could not rise. And they have fallen at my feet. For you have armed me with strength for the battle. You have subdued under me those who have rose against me. You have also given me the necks of my enemies, and so that I destroyed those who hated me. They looked, but there was none to save. Even so, Lord, but he did not answer them. Oh, he's going to give you the necks of the enemy. He, he'll, 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 give you, he'll give you the power if you're willing to use it. If, if you understand the vision of why you need to be delivered. If you understand the vision that you're going you're gonna to win souls. Everybody I know that, that's filled with the Holy Spirit, that's been delivered, they're, they're efficient soul winners. And, and they're ready. And, and they, they seize these divine opportunities. Well, that'll be you. There's no, he's not a respecter of persons, but you got to get rid of the doubt and the fear and the shame and the depression. You have to get rid of the addictions and the sinful rebellion. It's, it's just a mandate. It's not a suggestion. The stuff will steer you off. It'll pull you back. It's the way it works. 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 3. Finally, brethren, pray for us that the word of the Lord may run swiftly and be glorified just as it is with you. For we have been delivered from unreasonable and wicked men, for not all have faith. But the Lord is faithful, who will establish you and guard you from the evil one. So you don't have fear when you go through deliverance. You come out from unreasonable and wicked people. You come out from the wickedness of yourself. And he raises you up, takes you through a door, and he establishes you there and protects you there. Many people get nervous, like, man, you're fighting demons down here. The dude's like, man, he's going through deliverance. He had someone, some spirit pounded on his door. His wife's not even saved. Boom, 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 pounded on the door. And then a Kanye West song sang. He's like, dude, what was this? And I'm like, I don't know. Some spirit didn't like you out there sharing. He was giving some tracts and, and giving some gospel of John out there. I said, something followed you home. He goes, man, I can't believe you're in this ministry and you're dealing with this all the time. How, does it happen to you all the time? I said, no. And right here, it's because 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, and it says God's faithful, and he'll establish you in a position. And then he'll guard you in the position. Of freedom. It's, 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 he's not raising you up so you've got more, more problems and more adversity and more things coming at you. No, there's an establishing coming. The, the battle is down there in doubt and unbelief and in sin and rebellion. That's where the battle is. But he wants to raise you up out of the miry pit and he'll establish you. And then he'll guard you there. He'll send his holy angels to guard you, to encamp about you. It's real. But you got to go through. You got to go through. I'll show you how to do it. Fear is a spirit. It's clear in the Bible. Doubt and unbelief is a high offense to God. We can see it as the examples of the Jews in the wilderness. So fear causes confusion. 
then you go into isolation or down your own road. And then there's no satisfaction there. So then you grumble and then you complain. So then the word of God comes as he shines down on you. And then doubt and unbelief just shower your mind. And that's bondage. Those are all spiritual forces. He's doing it with lies that are in your head. The demons that come in, they hang on a lie. They came in through a lie because any sinful act was disobedience. That was a lie that was forbidden. But you went through that door. And when you went through that door, something has legal rights over time. Do you get a spirit the first time you do it? Maybe. Most likely I would say no. But when you do it repetitively, that's why the Bible says he who sins, makes a practice of sin, has no eternal life in him, right? He's making a practice over and over again. So when you do things over and over and over again, by definition, it gives place to the devil. It's established. Your wants and desires are, are, are now with sin. Some people, it's the old saying, misery loves company. A bunch of depressed people will get around each other and start wallowing in their sorrows and complaining about everything. So it's the mindset. It's the unbiblical mindset that he established in your mind. And then those things give what? Negative emotions, negative desires. Sometimes the only way you can find relief is drugs or alcohol. So we got to fight it all. We have to fight it. We have to confess it as sin. That's the first part of the fight is you're fighting to do what you hadn't done before. Lord, I'm, I'm telling you, I'm sorry. I'm turning my back on that sinful way. I refuse to go down that road any longer. And then you go into forgiveness. You got to forgive yourself. You got to forgive people who betrayed you. If you don't forgive people who betrayed you and let you down and were wrong, then hey, if they're your husband or they're your wife or they're your children, they, they can't even change because there's no love coming from you. You can't even release love when you haven't, you haven't forgiven someone. And then God can't do a miracle in your life because you're refusing to do what he told you to do. He told you to forgive people. Amen. So you're living in rebellions. So we have to repent. There's no sin that's too small. You know you've got to be sensitive to the Spirit now, what you've been doing. You've got to confess that sin. Go ahead and dim that light a little bit, Tony. Heavenly Father, Lord, we just come to you right now. And we thank you for the wonderful gift of your son, Jesus Christ, as Savior and Lord. Thank you, Jesus, that you were willing to come and lay down your life as a ransom for me. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the salvation of my soul. Thank you that you became a sin for me, that I might be the righteousness of God through Christ Jesus. Thank you for those promises. Thank you for, Lord, raising him from the dead as a guarantee one day I'll rise. Thank you, Lord, that I don't have to go to the white throne judgment, that my name is in the Lamb's book of life. I've already been given everything, Lord. I want to tell you that I'm so sorry for being ungrateful. Uh, I'll repent tonight. I'm so sorry for being a grumbler and a complainer. I'm so sorry for being fearful and riddled, riddled with doubt and unbelief. Forgive me, Lord, I've been angry and I've been blame shifting and I've been pointing the finger at everybody else and I refuse to look at my own self in actions. Please have mercy on my soul tonight. I've got involved with drugs and alcohol and sexual sin. Have mercy on my soul, Lord. I'm, I'm turning my back on it tonight, Lord. Lord, I've, I've dabbled with the occult. I've went and I've did things that I knew and I was convicted, Lord. I went back to the vomit. Please forgive me for it, Lord, for touching unclean things. Have mercy on my soul. I'm so sorry for these curses. I've cursed my children by allowing the occult. Please have mercy on my family, Lord. Break that curse, Lord. I want to go free. I want to help somebody. I want to go through it. I want to see an opportunity, a challenge of service, and I want to walk through it, and I want to find my ministry. I want to find miracle working power flowing through me. Thank you, Lord, for this opportunity. I want to be delivered tonight, Lord. I pray for everyone that wants to be delivered. I pray right now they would receive a fresh touch of the Holy Spirit. I pray, Jesus, you would breathe on them to receive the Holy Spirit, that they wouldn't fight from a position of defeat, but they would fight from a position of power. Thank you for doing it, Lord. 
Thank you for giving them a fresh filling of the Holy Spirit that we don't have to be victimized anymore. We don't have to be ran over anymore because you will establish us and you will guard us and you will protect us. Thank you for these promises in Jesus' name. Now, if you know you needed to be delivered, you come on up to the front. You can line up between that black mat and our carpet. The ministry team and myself will pray for you. You're using your faith when you come to the front. You're putting yourself in a position to get a miracle. You're coming up, overcoming that fear. You're getting out of that double-mindedness. You're making your move. You make your move, and God will make his move. Thank you for everybody coming, Lord. Thank you for it, Lord. Thank you for the Holy Spirit power. Thank you for the Holy Spirit power. We bind the devil. That means we don't permit the devil in our life. You just in your minds. I bind you, devil. I don't allow you in my mind. I don't allow you in my body. I don't allow you to destroy me anymore in Jesus' name. I don't allow you to destroy me anymore in my mind, in this pain, this turmoil, this anxiety. I do not allow you anymore. I'm not going to be your punching bag anymore. I do not allow you, Satan, to terrorize me anymore. I have free will. I'm turning on you in the name of Jesus Christ. Come out of there, you foul curse. Generational curses, I bind your power. Generational curses, I bind your power. Generational curses, I bind your power. I command you to come out right now. Every generational curse, come out of there right now. Curse of timidity, I command you to let this man go in the name of Jesus. The curse of fear, I command you to let this man go. Come out of there right now. Take a big breath, sir. Come out of there. Come out of there. That spiritual stupor. You come out of his brain right now in the name of Jesus. Come out of there. All that evil, come out of there. All that sickness, come out of there right now. Come out of there. Fight him. Come out of there, you foul devil. Come out of there right now. Going through the motions is over in the name of Jesus. All those voices in his head, I bind your power right now. I command every voice to come out right now. Voices in his head, lies in his mind. You got to fight now. Take a big breath. Come out of there right now in the mighty name of Jesus, the Son of God. All anxieties and all fears, all loneliness, all depression, I bind your power. You're not permitted here. You're not permitted here, you foul spirit. Come out right now. Come out of there. All that loneliness and depression, I command you to come out right now. Come out of there. Come out of there right now. Come out of there. Come out of there right now. Fight them now. Come out of there, all witchcraft. Come out of there right now. All witchcraft, come out of there. All anger, come out. All self-hatred, all hatred towards men that did her terrible. All men that caused her pain, taking her money, taking her time, using her up like a garment. Come out of there right now. Come out of there right now. Come out of there right now. All that pain from men that constantly used her up. They lied to her over and over again. We release those spirits that transfer from men. We release those spirits that transferred from men, that dominated her, that controlled her, that treated her like an object. I bind your power. It's over, devil. It's over. Your torment is over. Your torment is over in the name of Jesus Christ. Come out of there. All that anger. There he goes. All that anger. All that anger. Come out of there right now. Keep going. All that anger. Thanks. Come out of there. Don't swallow it. Come out of there. All that anger. Anger and hatred towards people. Come out of there. Come out of there. Mind binder. Mind blanker. I command you to come out of his mind. The Lord gives power. The Lord gives love. The Lord gives a sound mind. Take a big breath. Lord, thank you for the Holy Spirit power coming into his mind. Thank you for the Holy Spirit power coming into his mind. Thank you that he can have, Lord, free will. Free will to love you, to choose, to use his mind, to study and to show himself approved, to operate as a workman with no shame. I bind condemnation. Lord, thank you that we don't have to live sick. Thank you, Lord, we don't have to live sick. Thank you, Lord, you are the Lord that heals us from all our infirmities, all our diseases. I bind every foul curse right now in the name of Jesus. The curse of discouragement, the curse of despair, the curse of loneliness. The curse of anger. You ever been mad at God? Wonder why? No? You ever been mad at yourself? You got negative emotions towards yourself? No, I'm not no. myself too. 
to some a minister that did not like me in oh. prison. What, what was his name? T.D. Jakes. You knew T.D. Jakes, huh? Yes, he did that. Oh. Well, Lord, just pray this. Lord Jesus, we forgive everyone. We forgive everyone, Lord, that, that treated us unjustly, Lord. Any minister that treated us unjustly. What do you need prayer for? What do you need prayer for? What did you come up here for? You need healing? You need deliverance? The curse is being removed daily, and, and I want to completely, completely remove it altogether. Oh, Heavenly Father, Lord, she is not cursed. That was a lie. The devil cannot curse what the Lord has blessed. I break this curse of mental defeat. I break this curse of mental illness and lies and torment on her mind that told her she was cursed. In the name of Jesus Christ, I break any curse spoken over her. I break any curse that moved in and convinced her she was cursed. I loose your holds in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. And take a big breath. Come out of there right now. Come out of there. All those devils holding this man and robbing this man's anointing. Come out of there right now. Robbing the anointing to preach. Robbing the anointing to minister. Robbing the anointing to fight for other people, to fight for himself. You come out of there right now. I command every guilt, every double talker, talking him out of the promises. Come out of there right now. Come out of there. Come out of there right now. Come out of there. Come out of there. Evil, come out of there. Evil, take a big breath, sister. Evil, come out. Come out of there. You're lying. What do you need prayer for, sir? Huh? I don't know. You don't know? No. You got any open I have sin? A rocky heart. You have a rocky heart? What's your first name? Juan. Heavenly Father, Lord, Brother Juan's here, Lord. And Lord, he knows, Lord, to navigate in this sin stained world as a servant, that a hard heart will not work. A hard heart will take an offense again. A hard heart will get hurt again. A hard heart won't see an opportunity, won't be willing to give with an expectation of nothing in return. So, Heavenly Father, we confess, Lord, hardening our hearts as we did in the day of rebellion. And, Lord, tonight we open up our heart to the gospel of Jesus Christ. We open up our heart, Lord, for you to come in and change us. We open up your, our hearts that your power would come in and soften Juan's heart, Lord. Lord, we're so sorry for taking the offense with people that betrayed us, our fathers and, and relatives that, that did not do what we know they should have done in order for us to be in a better position. We forgive them right now in Jesus' name. And Lord, we forgive ourselves in Jesus' name. Take a big breath. Lord, I ask your Holy Spirit would come in to Juan right now. For the anointing of the Holy Spirit breaks the yoke. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for the anointing of the Holy Spirit to break the yoke of bondage, the yoke of hardness. Thank you, Jesus. I bind the anger. I bind the frustration. I break all that self-will. You set him up for failure because you tell him he's supposed to do it himself in his own power. And you know it won't work, devil. You've been lying to him. I expose those lie lies by the light of Jesus Christ. And I cause you to fall upon yourself to your own destruction, devil, in the name of Jesus. And you're to come out right now in Jesus' name. Take two big breaths. Thank you, Lord. Just take some nice big breath. Lord, thank you for the anointing that's on their life. It says... What the Lord has joined together, let no man put asunder. Lord, you joined them together for good works. That, Lord, they would be each other's helpmates, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that you're the God that changes people. You're the God that changes a man's heart. You're the God that changes a woman's heart, Lord, that, that you could go into operation. And, Lord, you could use them. I thank you for saving this marriage. I thank you for saving their souls. I thank you for giving them power, Lord, in this time of weakness, in this time of discouragement, in this time of despair. I thank you for giving them power. And I bind the spirit of quitting right now in the name of Jesus. I bind the quitter spirit. I bind the offense spirit that would try to constantly harp and remind past offenses over and over again to bring discouragement and to get them to quit. In the name of Jesus, the Son of God. Take a big breath. Come out of there right now. Come out of there. Come out of there. Those devils that try to emasculate him and take away his leadership ability and tell him not to pray. You come out in Jesus' name. Come out of there. Come out of there. I command you to let him go in Jesus' holy name. Going. Get out of there. Get out of there. Get out of there right now. Get out of there. Get out of there right now. Stop blocking his leadership. Stop blocking his leadership. Stop blocking his love for his wife. Come out. 
Stop blocking him giving to the Lord. Come out of there, New Age. Come out of there. Come out of there. What do you think you need prayer for? Oh, okay. 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 I know how to do it. Okay. All right. Well, that came in a long time ago. It's just going into operation now. So, Heavenly Father, we confess that, Lord. Lord, that we're not to deprive each other except for a, poor, a, a certain time that we would go into prayer and fasting, but we were to come together. And so, Lord, you're the one that supplies all of our needs according to your glorious riches which are in heaven. So, Lord, we subject ourselves to you, Lord. And so we renounce this sin, Lord, that, that came in in our youth, Lord. Thank you, Jesus that we don't have to live in that bondage. We don't have to live with those urges. We don't have to live with this false reality of some satisfaction or comfort that would come from it. Devil, I bind your power, and I command you to come out of her fingers in the name of Jesus. I, you try to come into those hands right now. You came in. I command you to come out in Jesus' name. You're trying to ruin this marriage. You're trying to keep them from coming together as a married couple. And you're trying to block the intimacy from each other. You're a liar, and I command you to go right now. Come out, all that insecurity and fear that came in, any transfer spirit that came in when she was a teenager, I command you to come out right now by the authority of Jesus Christ. Come out of there. Come out of there. Come out of there right now. Come out of there. I command you to come out of the body. All that self-gratification, she confessed you. She renounced you right now. You, she knows you're blocking this marriage. You're blocking them from getting together and loving each other and having those special times as a married couple. And I command you to let her go right now in Jesus' name. Two more. Come out of there. Come out of there right now all the way. Come out of there. You're a spirit of division. Fight him now. You're a spirit of division. Come out right now. Thank you for the Holy Spirit. Fight from a position of power now. Lord, thank you for the power that she can drive this out, that it's over. You've been in there since she was a teenager. I shut you down. I separate you from rejection and fear. I separate you in the name of Jesus, and I can, you are all not permitted. And I command you to come out. Two more. Let's go. Come out of there. Come out of there. Lord, thank you that she's not cursed. Heal her mind right now. Heal her mind right now. Heal his mind. Local Reshe day. Pray in tongues. All the pain, come out. Pain from betrayal. Pain from sickness. Pain from hating. Come out right now. Pain from hate. Come out. I bind that spirit of hate. Hate, come out of there right now. Hating other people. Hating herself. Come out of there right now. Come out of there right now. You're causing her to be tormented. Come out of there right now. Come out. Go. 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 There he goes. Go. What do you think you need delivered from? Yes. Oh. Okay. When did that first happen? I don't know exactly. I was reading English about a year ago. About a year and a half ago, I started doing tarot and witchcraft and right now. And I had experienced voices. When did you when did you get born again and give your life to Jesus? The moment so around the time that I found out that um, demons were real, that it was actually demons I was seeing, not false gods, not Buddha and not people. Okay. And then you called upon the name of the Lord Jesus and got saved? I, I thought that actually, no, I thought the rapture had happened twice already. Okay. Or something like that. And then I thought that we, I was in tribulation. Mm hmm And that we were, that he was like locked up. Or like God you got to fight. You get up in this altar. You got to tell him to go. Fight him in your mind. You don't have to use your voice. Use your mind. So what do you think now? You, you know that's not true now, right? I started having doubts that it's tribulation or that it might be tribulation. Well, it's the beginning of tribulation, but we're not in it now. You're in some tribulation. You're in some torment. That's true. Pray this prayer with me. You've got to renounce these devils. Heavenly Father, thank you for your son, Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus, for saving my soul. I surrender my life to you, Lord. I need your help tonight, Lord. I'm, in, I'm being tormented by these demons. I went to the dark side, Lord. 
I begin to call upon other gods. I begin to go to witches and mediums. Please forgive me, Lord. Have mercy on me. I want these things out of my body, Lord. I renounce Satan. I renounce all the occult. I renounce these terrorizing demons that are terrorizing me sexually. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Satan, I bind your power. I command you, I hate your guts and I hate you, what you're doing to this woman. I bind all your power and I command you to come out. All the witchcraft, sorcery, and divination, I can't command you right now. I separate you one from another. I forbid you to aid and better one another. You come out now in Jesus' name. Come out of there right now. Come out of there. There he goes. Come out of there. Come out of there. Come out of there, you terrorizer. Come out of there. Thanks. Come out of there. Hold this. I'm, I'm going to set your books right there. Just hold that. Your books are going to be right here. Come out of there right now. Come out of there. Stop terrorizing her. Stop doing that to her sexually. Stop doing that, you night stalker. Come out, you night stalker. Come out of there in Jesus' name. Come out of there, you night stalker. Come out of there. Stop touching her sexually. Come out, occult. Come out of there right now. Come out of there. Come out of there in the name of Jesus. Fight him with all your might. Hate him and turn on him. They'll all come out. Come out of my private parts. Come out of my brain. I renounce you, Satan. I belong to Jesus Christ. He's my deliverer. Tonight he fights for me. Lord, send this man hope. Send him hope. Fight him, sir. Come on, you don't fix air conditioners unless you get up on the roof, unless you start sweating. You don't get delivered and still you start fighting him. He had you in church for 40, 50, 60 years. I fight you now. You've been terrorizing me in my brain. You're terrorizing me in my brain. I'm tired of you doing that. Stop doing that to me. Come out of there. you got to fight him. Sometimes when I feel oppressed, I will yawn. Oh, that's good. They're coming out. Whatever you were doing at that point. And it's, it's, it's such a big yawn. That's them. I feel like I'm dislocating my jaw okay. and I start shaking. Well, okay, they're, that's them. How did you get to that point? I want you to do that again. Whatever you were praying. Website, okay, start reading that again in your mind. Go over those scriptures. When that starts happening, you're about to break. He's starting to go. That's deliverance. Go into reminding yourself those steps right now in Jesus' name. Sir, what do you need to be delivered from? Anxiety. Anxiety? You ever hate yourself? You ever forgive yourself? Well, God forgives you, and God gives you a second chance. What's your first name? Are you willing to repent and forgive yourself so God can help you? All right, pray this with me, Josh. Well, Heavenly Father, thank you for your love. Thank you for your unconditional love. That you love me despite of my failures. I love you back tonight, Lord. And I confess this sin of bitterness towards myself, of self-hatred. I turn on it right now, Lord. And I thank you that you love me. I thank you that you give me another chance. I want to be free from anxiety and fear tonight. Thank you for helping me. Satan, you heard that prayer, and I bind your power. And I command you right now, come out of my head in Jesus' name. Take two big breaths. Come out of there, devil, nice and easy. Come out of there. Anxieties, fears, torment, rejection. I bind your power. He's not rejected, devil. You're rejected. You try to impose your rejection upon him. I bind this rejection spirit right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Come out, devil. Anyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be delivered. Come out of there right now. There, devil. I command you, fight him now. Fight him. Thank you for the Holy Ghost. Thank you for the Holy Spirit. Thank you for the Holy Spirit. Fill him, Lord. I break this generational curse right now in the name of Jesus. I break this generational curse right now in the name of Jesus, the Son of God. I bind the serpent spirit in the name of Jesus. I bind the destroyer right now in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for forgiving, Lord, the family line for the forefathers and preceding generations that sinned with murder and sinned with sexual sin, that sinned with rape and rip-offs and scams, Lord. Thank you for the forgiveness through the blood of Jesus Christ. Thank you for helping this family right now. Satan, you're going to come out right now. You're going to come out right now. Come out. 
Generational curse, come out. Generational curse, come out right now. Kundalini, come out right now. Come out of there right now. Kundalini, come out of there right now. Come out of those serpent spirits. You come out right now. Come out of there. Come out. Come out of there right now. Come out of there. Come out of there. All this autism, come out. Autism and memory loss. Come out, autism and memory loss. Mind blanker, self-destructive thoughts. Come out, devils that are blocking his mind. I command you by the authority of Jesus to come out of the mind. Come out of the cognitive function in Jesus' name. Come out of the soul in Jesus' name. Come out of there. Come out of there right now. All those mind binders, all those mind blankers. Come out right now in the name of Jesus. Come out of there. Come out. Come out right now. Come out of there right now. Come out. Come out of there. Fears that the son won't get delivered. Fears that the prayers aren't answered. All the torment. Go, you tormentor. I break it in Jesus' name. Tormentor. What do you need delivered from, sister? Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Like 40 days oh, now. She really started breaking out. Oh, thank you, and she Lord. Has a hard time sleeping. Lord, I thank you for touching this little girl. Thank you for touching her, Lord. Thank you for giving her peace. Thank you for healing her, Lord, of this eczema, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that you're allowing sleep to come into her, Lord. I know you said, let all the little children come to me, Lord. I pray that she would sleep, Lord. That she would sleep 10, 12, 14 hours a day, Lord, as she grows, Lord. I thank you for the anointing of Jesus Christ that's on her life. Thank you, Lord, for the anointing of Jesus Christ. Thank you for your protection that's over her. Lord, if anyone has sinned in the family, Lord, in the preceding generations that influenced her life, Lord, I confess those sins, Lord, and I thank you, Lord, for forgiving the family line that this little girl would go free. Thank you, Lord, that your presence is with her. Thank you, Lord, that she'll know you, Lord, at a very young age. Thank you that she'll do wonderful things that make you happy. I pray she'd be known as a happy child. She'd raise up and be a happy girl. She'd be a strong, happy woman because your presence is always with her. In Jesus' name, thank you for mom. Thank you for all the care. Thank you for all the love. Thank you for that anointing of Jesus Christ. Thank you for the hope. Thank you that every prayer she prays is answered. I command anxiety to come out. Anxiety about the future. Anxiety about herself. Anxiety about her value and her worth. I bind every curse that came in when she was a little girl telling her she wasn't enough. She wasn't smart enough. Athletic enough. Pretty enough. All those lies, I bind you in the name of Jesus, the Son of God, and I command you to let her go. I command the terror to come out right now. The terror of not being enough. God calls us and loves us. And God uses us and gifts us and makes things new. You're trying to hold her down with this past and those past emotions and experiences. You come out right now in Jesus' name. Come out of there. All that anxiety is right there. All that anxiety, chest pressures. I command you to come out. Come out of there right now. Big breath. Come out of there. Come out of there, I separate you one from another. Come all the way out, you choker. Come out right now. Come out right now, you choker. You got any hatred towards anyone? Who do you have to forgive? Everyone? Oh, okay. Okay, here's how it works. The first thing you get from Jesus is unconditional love. Then he says, whatever you have received, freely give it. So you stay stuck because you, you're not giving it away, and therefore you're dried up. You're not getting all your needs met. You've got to forgive them. Jesus said it was a mandate. It was a command. It's by faith. You willing to do that? Pray this with me. Heavenly Father, I've been hurt. I've been betrayed. I've been belittled. But tonight, Lord, I'm choosing to forgive my family. I'm choosing to forgive these people that treated me like garbage. 
I'm releasing them to you, Lord. And I pray for their soul. I forgive myself, Lord. I want you to move in my life. I want to hear you. I want to use, I want you to use me. I want you to bless me. Thank you for coming and filling me with your spirit, Lord. I release all these things to you in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Now, devil, you heard that. I bind that offense-taking spirit. You are a spirit that made her take an offense from all those people who betrayed her and hurt her. And I bind your power. You're not allowed here. And I command you by the authority of Jesus Christ to come out of her mind right now. Come out of her emotions. Stop terrorizing her with all those memories in Jesus' name. Come out. All that bitterness, come out. All those poisons of bitterness, come out. All the bitterness of poison, come out. All the bitterness of poison of hating people, come out. That spirit of hate, come out right now. That spirit of hate, come out of there, you curse. Curse, come out of there right now. All Native American spiritualism, come out right now. All that witchcraft, come out of there right now. Hating dad, that's a curse trying to shorten her life. Come out. Hating mom and dad, I place value on them, Lord. I'm so sorry for dishonoring my mother and father. Come out of there, you curse. Come out of there, you choker. Take your bitterness and your poisons and go. Take your bitterness and poisons and go. Come out of the lymphatic system. Come out. All those cancerous. Come out. All those cancers. Come out. All those cancers. Come out right now in Jesus' name. Come out all those negative emotions. All those lying voices reminding her of every negative thing someone did to her. Every negative thing someone said to her. I command you to come out. Come out of there. Come out of there. Fight him. You're coming out of my body. You're coming out of my body in Jesus' name. Come out of my body. Keep fighting him. You got the anointing. Keep fighting him with all your might. You got the anointing. Every mind-binding spirit. Any spirit hiding in brand, you're bound. Any mind-binding spirit, any witchcraft spirit of discouragement, I bind your power. I bind your power. You are exposed by the light of Christ. You won't hide with discouragement. You won't hide with I'm not good enough. You won't hide, you liar. You come out in Jesus' name. You come out. Come out of there right now. Streamers, you have to fight. You got to fight. Everyone gets delivered who fights. Hey, what do you think you need from the Lord? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. You ever been in the occult or anything? You ever looked at any witchcraft stuff online? Not you, you got any friends that were in it? That were into witchcraft, sorcery, divination, and the occult? Yes. You ever smoke pot with them or anything? You just hung around with them and they were into that stuff? What kind of necklace you got there? Put us on there. Anything? Well, that's interesting that you say that. Because I had a Star of David, but it wasn't the real Star of David. And the Star of David is the God of Raphael. That's an occult symbol. The Jews turned their back on Jesus Christ when he came. He came to his own, his own received him not. That thing wasn't anything to do with David. Go ahead and put that in your pocket. Good thing you got rid of that. Did you get that from your friends or something? I got it. Um, I got it as a gift. Oh, okay. Lord? I think you got it. Oh. What, what's your first name? Are you born again? You gave your life to Jesus? And he's touched you? In the pocket. Yeah, just in your pocket. God will tell you what to do with it. Lord Jesus, we're so sorry, Lord. You said we're the children of the light. The minute this man got born again, this young man, his life wasn't his own. It belonged to you. It was bought with a price. So, Lord, good does not have in common with evil. Light doesn't have in common with darkness. Lord, we repent of picking up transfer spirits. I repent of looking and viewing things with curiosity, Lord. Lord, I don't want these demons that are affecting my muscles, affecting my will and my strength. I don't want anything to do with them, Lord. I turn my back on the devil tonight. I turn my back on 
the devil, and I want that life that you have for me. I want you, Lord. I want to be interested in the things you're interested in. I want to do things you want me to do, Lord. I'm turning my life over to you in Jesus' name. Every foul devil of the occult, I bind your power. Every devil of serpent spirits, I bind your power. I don't know how you got in there, but you're coming out in Jesus' name. I command these snake spirits to come out right now. These serpent spirits, this destroyer of his body and his muscle structures, I bind your power in Jesus' holy name, and I command you to come out. All that fear, fear that things are going bad, fear that things aren't going to go good, I command all those fears to come out in Jesus' name. Come out of there. Come out of there. Occult spirits. Come out of there right now. Transfer spirits. Come out. Come out of there. Come out. Spirits that came in through occult objects. Come out right now in Jesus' name. Come out of there right now. Come out of there right now. He's not a slave to you, Satan. I command you to come out of here. Stop tormenting his body. Come out of his hormones. Come out right now. Come out of his central nervous system in Jesus' name. Come out of there. Come out of the central nervous system right now in Jesus' name. Come out of there. Come out of there right now. Come out of there. Come out of the central nervous system. Keep fighting them. Don't stop those. Come out. Come out of there. Come out picking up occult items. Come out right now. Letting the occult things in the house. Come out right now in Jesus' name. Come out of this family. Come out of there right now. Stop tormenting the children of God. Stop tormenting the children of God in Jesus' name. Fight them. Fight them in your mind. I want you out. He'll leave. You got authority over him. Fight him. Lord, thank you for giving her wisdom, knowledge, and forgiveness. If there's anything in this body, Lord, that came in to destroy her, I thank you for driving it out in Jesus' name. Thank you for driving out anxieties and fears, driving out these spirits that tell her she can't grow and blossom as a woman of God, those lying devils that choke her and make her chest feel tight at night. Thank you for driving them out in Jesus' name. Devil, come out of there. You're choking the life of Christ. There he goes. Come out of there. Stop choking her with the life of Jesus Christ. Come out, you deaf spirit. Thank you, Lord. Send the anointing. Hey, do you think that devil's got anything on you? Do, you? do you doing anything that's sinful on a regular basis? What are you doing? You watch porn? How long you been doing that? Way too young. Yeah, you do it every day. Not, not anymore. Oh, how long you been uh, quit? Have you quit? I've quit on and off for the last few years, but it used to be every day. So how long has it been? Two weeks? Two days? Two months? Yeah. Okay, here's how it works. See, you, you said you had self-hatred, right? Well, the devil knows how to get you to agree to that. You do something, they drive you with lust because you got insecurities and fears and rejection. So you feel, hey, this will bring me some pleasure. And it does temporarily. But once you're done, then he condemns you and says, you know you shouldn't do that. You know God's not happy with you doing that. What kind of man are you? You shouldn't expect the blessing from God. And then he accuses you for it. He's running a dog and pony show. He's going in the same circle over and over again. And how he got in there was from rejection. The minute you're saved, you are not rejected. You are the beloved of the Lord. You are adopted as a son of God. And then he wants to help you. But the devil used that lust that came in when you were exposed to pornography at a young age. And he tells you, hey, there's no good life for you. You're not Brad Pitt. You're, you're not funny like Kevin Hart. You're just a normal person. This is all you get. He's messing with your mind. He's trying to destroy your Christian life. Can you see him? Don't, can you see how he's running this operation? That's how you get delivered. Don't worry about that bucket. Fight him in your mind. Just in your mind. Just shut your eyes. Devil, you've been tormenting me. You're the one led me into that porn. You're the one exposed me to that. You're the one trying to take away my wife and my family. You're the one trying to accuse me of being a pervert. I'm not going to listen to you anymore. 
I'm done with this pornography. I'm done with this rejection. I'm done with this fear. I'm done with you making me feel like I'm a loser. I'm a child of God. I'm who God wants me to be. I'll do what God wants me to do. That's how it's going down. You're a liar. Every lie that was lodged into this man's brain, I expose you right now in the name of Jesus. I loose you right now in the name of Jesus, the Son of God. All that rejection and porn and condemnation, I separate this dog and pony show. I expose this scam in the name of Jesus, and I command you to come out right now. Just take a couple big breaths. Holy Spirit, thank you for coming in. Thank you for coming in because you love him. Thank you for coming in because coming in you empower a believer to live in victory. Thank you, Lord. He's not a victim. The Bible says we're more than conquerors through Christ Jesus who gives us the strength. Thank you that you said we would receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon us. Thank you for the Holy Spirit power. Just get the power. Sir, you pray in tongues? Yes. Okay, let your tongues go. Da correche kuma la cote, de la correche te, de la matara corro, shotara ba correche trebequete. All those incubus spirits, succubus spirits, all these foul terrorizers of the night, all the occult that came to terrorize her, came to make her feel less than. Those foul spirits, we do not want your sexual advances. We do not want your sexual torment. We do not give place to Satan. We command you by the authority of Jesus Christ to come out of there. Come out of there, you terror. You tormentor, you come out of there. Come out, the occult and those lies in the mind. Come out of there, you occult spirits. Come all the way out of their head. Come out of there, the occult. Come out, the occult. Come out of there right now. Go. Go right now. What's going on, Ranju? Hey, sister, what do you need prayer for before we go? You brought your mother. What's the deal with your mother? She, she's got some spirits in her head. She's, getting, she, she's had mental illness for a while. Well, well, she, she thinks she thinks T. Yeah, she thinks T. D. Jakes cursed her. Right. But she can actually feel like a demon or something attached to her that's causing her not to sleep, and it's like uh, moving all over. Her body. Oh, was her was her mother uh, was her mother and father Christians? Yes, they were, they were pastors. They, had they were. Oh, what kind of what kind of denomination? Christian Church of God. Oh, okay. Yes. And how old was she when she first started having those symptoms? A little. Um, high school. High school. Yes. Where's your dad at? Where's her husband? He passed away. Oh, he passed away. How old is she? Seventy-five. She's seventy-six. Seventy-six. Yes. So it's taking a toll on her. She can't sleep. Or she can't get any rest because she can feel this does she here's the thing does she got a fence with TD Jakes is she mad at him for what she thinks he I'm cursed sure her she is, but this all started way before that. well I'm, I'm telling you how it works yes. these demons these curses what they do is they convince somebody of what they're telling them and then when you take an offense, they, they, they get to lodge in there. Even when your brain's malfunctioning, if you've got an offense with people because the devil told you a lie and you, you believe it as truth, then he stays there. So it's going to take someone like you that's strong. To, it's not hard. You've got to systematically, you got to systematically dismantle the devil with her forgiving these people. Because even if they did, even if he did curse her, right? So she's going to think it's true. She has to forgive him. She has to forgive all these people because these demons are smart and they get you to hate people. So if you'll walk her through this list, I'll give you this list. It's called the miracle list. And if she'll do all these things, then they'll come out. God, the Lord does not want her tormented like this. She's tormented of the devil. And so all we have to do is catch her on the days. And I don't know, sometimes in the morning they're working a little more, you know, uh, things are better and then towards the evening most of the time it's worse right well however it works you catch her on a good time and you walk her through this list and say hey this is how God's going to get us free by doing the word of God this devil can't he the curse does not come without a cause so he comes he makes you to believe his cause and then he has the legal rights so he'll leave once we get rid of his lies. And it's a little harder because she's got things going back and forth, but as long the Holy Spirit will always work in a believer, even if they're dealing with some schizophrenic type spirits, 
that got you yo-yoing and believing things that aren't true. So she'll do the things that are right because the word will always confirm in her spirit that it's right. Then he won't have any place and then you just tell it to go. And you tell her to tell it to go. Don't let him move around your face like that. Don't let him terrorize you at night. You tell him, I'm going to bed. All right, let me give you this list. That's all the, the steps, biblically. Okay. And when, when you did all that, they don't have anything to hold on to. But see, we're kind of fighting years of lies. And then it, what happens when the mental illness are attacking people, then what happens is that people kind of give up. Because like, oh, man, I don't got time for this. This is like swatting flies. They never end in the summer, right? But you just got to walk them through and say, hey, there's only 12 steps. There's only 12 moves the enemy can be making. These verses all expose them, and if we'll do these, these, that you can go tell her something she wants. You can go back to sleep. You can stop having this torment. You got to get her to use her free will of something she wants. Okay. Yes. Okay. Well, until she does it all. But I guarantee you, you start uncorking this thing. There's going to be about 30 people that she hates. She hates T.D. Jakes if he cursed her, right? So. That spirit came in and is trying to give him, give her a no out. Like, hey, this thing's so layered up with so many people. We'll find out the mailman. You know, he, he cursed me. I saw his lips moving, and it was a curse. He said, I curse you. I saw it, right? It's a weird things, you know. But nevertheless, God will bring it to light, and we can walk through them all and do what's right. And the devil's literally dismantled. So it's just no one caught him early. So your, your, your grandparents were probably over in Africa. They were over in some sin-stained area dealing with witches, and they were able to be strong. So sometimes the, the daughters aren't as strong, the sons aren't as strong as the, as the leaders because they look at themselves as not quite as anointed, so they don't invest always as much, right? And that devil said, hey, I'm going to cause some trouble. I'm coming on down. But he can be exposed, and he can be cast out for sure. And then I'll give you this card. After you do that, you can come in here. So then you could sit down with someone, and then you can just have a less stressful environment, right? But once she's done that list, that can take a day or that can take a month, right? Whatever it takes, she might wrestle on some because you'll go, ooh, this spirit's got her convinced here. we got to take some time. Like, hey, I think we need to pray about this. Don't, don't force it on her. Say, let's pray about this and about forgiving this person or whatever she has resistance to. And then just, when she, what did what, what the Lord tell you? Okay, let's go ahead and do it. Just kind of working her through it. And once she's done all that, or you get pretty close, just make that call. That'll take like 10 days to get the appointment because they're kind of booked up because the radio program. It's a lot of people to come in here. And then uh, once you get about halfway, make that call and say, hey, I got my mother. We went through this miracle list, and Brother Rick said to call for an appointment. And uh, then you can sit down, you and Mom, just come in here, and we can, we can prep it a little bit and then start charging them. But now we're in the middle of this battle, and it's like, you know, there's not enough time, right? This will get you ready. Amen. Okay. You're the one to do it. You got the Holy Ghost and you got the faith for it. You're going to get it done. Thank you. Hey, I know your puppy. He used to come in the high. He doesn't like men, though. He's gotten better, though. Oh. He's better. Good. Yeah, he's, uh, he runs up and down here. He got more, con more, uh, more confident over the uh, school year. And your mom would bring him in. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Come out. Come out. Loose your hold on her now. Come out. You're a twister. You come from Kundalini that twists truth. Telling her she's not saved. Telling her that she doesn't have the Holy Spirit. Telling her that she doesn't have power. Telling her that she went too far. That she'll never be anointed because she did too much. You're a liar. Come off this spine, twisting it. You twist the spine, you twist the truth. Come out in the mighty name of Jesus. 
Come all the way out in the name of Jesus. Hey, sir, what, what's your first name? Marvin. Marvin. Hey, I want to give you this list. You, you're, you're a good Christian. You're going to be able to, you got to, sometimes when you know as much as you know, sitting on this a little bit with Jesus helps you a little bit. And you need to make sure that he doesn't have any holds. You know, he's kind of, these verses will bring anything to light that's hidden. It's called the miracle list, but it's just all well, Bible verses that, that, that allow, that release miracles. Okay, thank you. Yeah, take your time with it. It'll really help you. Praise God. Yeah, and you keep moving forward. You keep growing. You keep expecting. Yeah. Well, he just protects you, right? You might have to go through what you're still going through, whatever's still in then in there. But once you go through it, he's not letting them come back and get you. No, because you're standing and you're operating on a, on, a, on a level of faith and you're doing good things. You're designed to do good works you're, you're before the creation of the world. Well, here's what happened is those spirits just came in over 40 years of your life. They, it took them a while, right? So you can't, you can't get, be discouraged at the battle. You got the anointing. You're getting rid of all that deep witchcraft. You had a little bit more than most, most people. Right? Yeah. So you're just going to be able to help people better than me because you've been through it in witchcraft because you've been through it. You know what it's like to be tormented from the time you probably were 16. They started going into operation. What's your first name again? Alina. Alina? Grandma tried to take me out since I was a little girl. When I was three years old, I fell in my grandma's Catholic and she at her, my grandpa's ranch. They had cactuses around the saints. Uh-huh. I fell in it and I got pneumonia. I was in a plastic bubble. But yeah, I used to be really into God and then I quit when my parents got divorced. Oh, okay, I see. When I was about 16, yeah, that's when I started that's, going back wild. Okay, yeah, well, well now, see, you were, you were called for good works. The devil knew it, so he sent a bunch of bad people to coerce you and to help you, right, and to hurt you. Okay, why don't you sit down there? We got to pray, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We don't have to see demons anymore. We don't have to have demons wrecking our finances anymore, Lord, because you got her. You got her, Lord. There's an end to the deliverance. Lord, we're not going to pick up any more spirits because we're trusting you. You're establishing her now, Lord, in your word. She's not going back to going buck wild, as she said she did as a kid. Those days are over. Doubting you, doubting your word, those days are over. The blessings are coming, Lord. Thank you that you're blessing her with good friends, people who love her. Thank you that you're blessing her with a sound mind. Thank you that you're blessing her with hope. Thank you, Lord, for helping her, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for giving her the blessed assurance of the Holy Spirit. That's the guarantee of the purchased possession, that you're coming back for what you purchased, Lord. Thank you for this Holy Spirit peace. I'm praying that her sleep will begin to increase, that her vitality and her strength will begin to return. Her hope will begin to return. Her expectation will begin to return. Thank you, Jesus. Come out of there. The rest of those devils stealing. Come out of there, you thief. All those curses, the curses that stole her house. God's got all kinds of houses. He's got a cattle in a thousand hills. Come out. He what? Okay, and witchcraft is over. Witchcraft is over. The curse does not come without a cause. So we are not giving no place to the devil. There are no more causes. I'm not taking offense. I let my boyfriend go. I bless those people who curse me. I don't take an offense anymore. It's over. I, it's over. I don't take an offense. I pray you'd come to the knowledge of Jesus. I pray you wouldn't go to, go to hell for cursing me. Thank you, Jesus. I forgive my boyfriend, ex-boyfriend, for leaving. 
I know, Lord, you'll supply every need I have. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You're going to get all the way through it. Hey, where are you guys from? Are you from Phoenix? Where, where are you from? How long are you going to be here for? Um, can you, uh, can you, uh, come here like at 630 and so you can sit down with someone and talk to somebody? They just kind of got you wound up, right? They got your emotions going, you know, they, they got, they're, they're just hitting you with a lot of things. What happens is you can kind of get built up sitting down with someone. We can go over some scriptures, we can go over some things that will build you with godly confidence. But you could do it on that Zoom call, too. You can, God bless you, bro. Looking forward to you coming around more often. Uh, uh, but let me give you some homework assignments. These will help you. Ever go to that Zoom call? No, tomorrow night. Because they meet at 7. But you could come and sit down with one of these counselors for like a, an hour. Okay, you're gonna you're gonna talk to Lori in the bookstore and tell him Rick told you to come in at 6:30 and and to get on the list to sit down with someone. Then you'll go into one of these offices and sit with someone. Let me give you some homework assignments. Some of these you you won't be able to do right away. It'll take you some time, but these will really help you. Streamers, David Baldwin's tomorrow, be on there. 